In this lecture, we're going to look at the surface anatomy of the abdomen. So we're going to look at various surface landmarks which we can observe on the anterior and lateral aspects of the abdomen. We're going to use these landmarks to create various reference planes and regions, and then using these regions, locate the position of organs within the abdomen. For example, we'll look at where the appendix is located and where the liver is. And then finally, towards the end of the lecture, we're going to importantly look at the sensory distribution, how the skin of the abdomen receives its sensory innovation and how this passes back to the spinal cord. And this is important when we're looking at the distribution of pain from pathologies within the abdomen and the viscera of the abdominal um, organs. So on the screen at the moment, we can see the body plan of the male and the female. And we're really going to be concentrating on this region, which we can see here in the male, the abdomen, and also which we can see in the female. So this abdominal region that's positioned inferior to the thorax. And on here, we can pick out a series of important landmarks, some of which we can feel on ourselves. And we can start off superiorly with the xiphoid process, which in the male we can see is here, and in the female we can see is about here. We can feel this landmark on ourselves if you feel your sternum in your thoracic cavity, and go inferiorly, and where it stops, that point is your xiphoid process. Radiating laterally away from this process, we have the costal cartilages of ribs 7, 8, 9 and 10. And these radiate away in this direction in the male, and similarly they do so in the female. And this marks the superior boundary of the abdomen. Inferiorly, we have a few landmarks which we can observe. Again, in the midline, in the male and the female, we have the pubic crest and the pubic symphysis. We'll see these later on when we go into the pelvis and we look at the bones of the pelvis. And radiating away from the pubic crest and pubic symphysis, we find we have the inguinal ligaments. We have these two ligaments, one on either side, and these form the inferior boundary of the abdomen. So here we can see the superior and the inferior boundaries of the abdomen in both the male and the female. If we have a close-up view of the abdomen, we can see there's numerous features which we can observe just on the surface. So this is without going into the abdominal cavity itself. And we can pick out a number of these features. Again, we can separate the abdominal cavity into this region here, which we're going to focus on. Specifically, we can see we have the umbilicus in the midline here, and then radiating superior and inferiorly away from the umbilicus, we have the linear alba. And this separates the abdomen into left and right sides. So we can see the umbilicus, we can see that here, and we can see that midline, the linear alba. Either side of the linear alba, we have a series of muscles which are radiating inferiorly down. These are running like strap-like muscles, either side of the midline. And these are our six packs. Some people may be able to see them depending on how much subcutaneous fat you have under your skin, but you can see that either side of the midline we have these indentations that give this region its characteristic six pack appearance. Lateral to these muscles we can see we've got this line running down here, separating the six pack from the more lateral musculature, which we'll cover in due course. And these are known as our semilunar lines. So we have the linear alba in the midline, we have the umbilicus, and then lateral to it, we have a pair of um, semilunar lines here and here. We can also see a few bony landmarks. So we have a structure on either side of the body known as the anterior superior iliac spine. And this is approximately here and here, and these are the structures which you're supposed to hang your trousers on. So your trousers are supposed to sit on these bony landmarks. And as we saw in the previous slide, these radiate um, structures from these regions radiate down to the midline where we find the pubic symphysis and the iliac crest. 
So from the anterior superior iliac spine, which we can see here, we then have the, in the midline, the iliac crest and the pubic symphysis. And running down, we see this inguinal depression, which indicates the inguinal ligament, and we just see it slightly depressed, and that's our inguinal groove. So these surface landmarks on the abdomen are really important in helping us observe this, if there's any scarring or if there's any um, damage being, that's, that's occurred to this region. But this is a nice normal anterior aspect of the abdomen. If we look at the anterior aspect of the abdomen, then superimposed onto this region are a number of lines which we've drawn on. And these actually divide the abdomen into numerous regions. And the lines that we've drawn on use the surface landmarks which we spoke about previously. So what we can see is that here we've got our abdomen, this region around here. We can see we've got our superior aspect up here and we've got the inferior aspect down here. And we can use the landmarks which we spoke about previously to divide it up into various regions. So we can create this, uh, this sagittal or this vertical plane that runs down. If we look up here, we have our two clavicles. And if we look at the mid-clavicular line, this is a line which runs all the way down from the clavicle all the way down to the midpoint of the inguinal ligament. So the inguinal ligament is running in this direction, and we've got our clavicle here, and we have this mid-clavicular line that's running all the way down in this direction. We have one on this right side, and we also have another on this left side. And you can see this divides the abdomen into the three vertical bands. We've got one here, one here, and one here. We can also look at two transverse or horizontal planes that are going across the abdomen. We have one known as the subcostal plane that's running in this direction here, in line with the tenth costal cartilage that runs horizontally. And then we have another one known as the transtubercular line, which runs across here. And we can see this now divides the surface of the abdomen into nine regions. We can see we have a region here, here, and here. So we have one, two, three, and then we have three below, and then three below that. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And these regions are really important. Because you can teach people that deep to these specific regions we have certain organs, so that if pain is radiating in one of these regions, you have a good idea of which organ lies beneath it. So we can see in this midline here, we have what's known as the epigastric region, and then deep to that, by the umbilicus, we have the umbilical region. Inferior to the umbilical region again, we find we have the pubic region here. So we have epigastric, we have umbilicus, and we have a pubic region. And then lateral to these, so on either side of these, we have left and right versions. So here on this left-hand side, we have the left hypochondriac, and then on this side, we have the right hypochondriac. Inferior to those, and lateral to the umbilical region, we have the left lumbar, and we have the right lumbar regions. And then inferior to that again, we have the left inguinal region and we have the right inguinal region. So we know, for example, that down in this right inguinal region, our appendix is located. So if pain is, lo is radiating from this region, it's maybe an indication that we have appendicitis. We know that radiating in most of these regions, we have the small intestine. We know that up in this region here, we have the spleen. So through the course, we'll look at the position of these organs and how they can relate to the surface of the abdomen. So these surface landmarks and these abdominal regions and reference planes are really important. This is a cartoon which you're probably really familiar with as you've gone through your education and the, just the idea of where the organs are within the abdominal cavity. So here we can see we've got the sternum here. Now we can see the xiphi sternum, this inferior limit of the sternum, which demarcates the superior aspect of the abdomen. And then we can see it radiating down in this direction with those costal cartilages. We can see really clearly now, tucked up on this right-hand side, protected by the ribs, we've got the liver, this large organ, the largest gland in the human 
body. And in the midline, we can see just about we've got the stomach here, which is then continuous with what's called the duodenum, and that's the first part of the small intestine. But previously, I mentioned the appendix down in this lower right inguinal region. And here we can see in the lower right inguinal region, we can actually find the appendix. So these are really important landmarks which we can identify um, in the abdominal cavity. This is an anterior view. Over here, we've got a posterior view, and we can see where the kidneys are located either side of the vertebral column. We can also see tucked up over here, we have the spleen, which you can just about make out on this left-hand side. So we'll look at the various positions of these organs as we go through the course, but this provides a good general overview. So now we can relate the surface landmarks that we spoke about previously to a couple of these organs, like the liver and the appendix. Here we can start off with the appendix, this blind pouch that's located at the beginning of the large intestine by the cecum. And this is really important because, as I mentioned before, we may have radiating pain coming from this region. So a useful technique for locating this pain is to use what's known as McBurney's point. And this is a, a surface landmark for the appendix. So again, we can remind ourselves of where the umbilicus is. We can see it here. We can remind ourselves of where the anterior superior iliac spine is. And as we can see in the diagram, we can draw a line between these two regions. A third of the way from the anterior superior iliac spine towards the umbilicus, so about a third of the way across, we can locate our appendix. And that's known as McBurney's point. Palpation in this region can lead to quite severe acute pain. And this can indicate that the patient maybe has appendicitis. So that's where these surface landmarks are really important in being able to identify which organs lie deep to the skin. We can also see over on this side, again, mentioned it in the previous slide, the position of the liver. And here we can see that actually the liver is hard to palpate because most of the liver is actually covered by these ribs. And here this diagram may not be 100% correct in that it's quite unusual for the liver to actually be so clearly observed free of the ribs. It's usually only in patients that have an enlarged liver that it can actually radiate below the ribs. And to palpate the liver, you can feel this costal margin. And asking the patient to breathe in and out moves the liver. And you can actually, pressing on the skin deep to these ribs, can feel this edge of the liver pressing against your fingers. So it's really important that we mention the surface landmarks, as you can use them to try and feel and locate organs deep to the skin. So finally, getting towards the end of this initial introductory kind of surface anatomy lecture, I want to show this picture which may look slightly bizarre, but on, the, on this side here we can see a male torso. And what's being drawn onto it are a series of horizontal bands, like you're wearing a, a hooped jumper. And these horizontal bands mark an area of the abdomen that is innervated via a specific spinal nerve. And on this side, we can see that we have these individual spinal nerves which are radiating from the spinal cord. So if we look here, we can see that we have these series of transverse bands. Here we can locate them as T10, T11, T12, L1. These are the regions of the spinal cord that these spinal nerves originate from. And what we can see is that we've also superimposed various organs. So here we can see we've got a region here which is the stomach, we've got a region here which indicates the liver and the gallbladder. This is important because this is where these organs, if they become inflamed or if they become damaged, radiate their pain to these specific nerves. And because the body is not used to feeling pain from the the stomach or from the intestines because they're busy functioning, the body assumes it's coming from that area of the skin, which it's used to feeling. You're used to touching your abdomen, so the brain is used to receiving sensation. So it's important, therefore, to understand where these organs refer their pain 
to the surface of the abdomen. And we'll explore this in later detail towards the end of this course. So in conclusion, in this initial introductory surface anatomy lecture, we've looked at numerous surface landmarks like the umbil umbilicus, the ziphy sternum, pubic symphysis, and that important bone, the anterior superior iliac spine. We've then used these regions to lo locate specific reference planes like the midclavicular plane, subcostal, transtubercular, and how these divide up the anterior surface of the abdomen into numerous regions like the hypochondria, epigastric, lateral, lumbar regions, umbilical, inguinal, or pubic regions. And we looked briefly at the position of some general organs within these specific regions, specifically looking at the appendix and the liver. And then towards the end, we looked again briefly, but we'll come back to this throughout the course, the sensory distribution from the skin and also from the organs that lie deep to it. <laughs>